Hi, I'm Nathan Crandall, founder of Your Fluency Coach, and welcome to today's Leaders Teach Conversation video lesson. In today's video lesson, we're going to listen to a conversation between Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, and the American talk show host, Charlie Rose. We'll hear Tim Cook talk about Apple's acquisition of the company Beats, Tim Cook's relationship with Steve Jobs, and the future of Apple TV. Let's listen to the video once without subtitles. So you can try to understand as much as possible on your own. Then we'll listen to it again with subtitles. And I'll explain conversational phrases and expressions that might be new to you. Let's listen. Why did you think you had to buy a headphone manufacturer? In Beats, what we saw is several things. We saw talent, a ta talent that uh, I'm super impressed with, uh, Jimmy and Dre. Off the, char off the charts, creative geniuses. Uh, they also had teams underneath them that I really liked. Uh, Jimmy has a deep knowledge of the musical industry. Dre knows artists. Dre is an artist. And they had started a, a subscription service. Mm -hmm. And this subscription service, you know, some people think they're all alike. Well, l let me tell you, I, I, was, I went into the thing skeptically. It, it, like the I acquisition? Yeah. Not to the acquisition, into their service, because right, Jimmy had right. told me how great it was. And so one night I'm sitting playing with theirs versus some others, and all of a sudden it dawns on me that when I listen to theirs for a while, I feel completely different. And the reason is that they recognized that human curation was important in the subscription service, that the sequencing of songs that you listen to affect how you feel. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe, but you know it when you feel it. Mm -hmm. and, and so that night, I couldn't sleep that night. And so I was thinking, We've, we need to do this. They also have, I think they've done a fabulous job with their brand and in the, the headphone business. It's a fast growing business. They went into it not too long ago and you know have done really well. However, they needed a global footprint. We have a global footprint. They, they have been primarily U.S., not solely U.S., but primarily U.S. And so I felt we could get a subscription service. We could get incredible talent and that I think we can all put our heads together and do some things that are beyond what either of us are currently doing. And we could get a fast-growing business. Where is Steve in all this? Well, he's, he's in my heart, and uh, he is deep in Apple's DNA. Uh, his, his spirit will always be the foundation of the company. Uh, I th literally think about him every day. Uh, his office is still left as it was. On the fourth floor? On the fourth floor. Uh, his name is still on the door. And we... Still, if you think about the things that Steve stood for at a macro level, he stood for innovation. He stood for the simple, not the complex. He knew that Apple should only enter areas where we can control the, the, the primary technology. Uh, all of these things are still deep in our company. There's, there's still things that we very much believe. The, the, the strive for perfection for being the best, for only doing the best products, for staying focused. The fact that despite this table being so small that you and I are sitting at, you could put every Apple product on it, every single one that we ship today, and yet this year our revenues will be uh, you know, approximately $180 billion. There's probably no other company on the face of the earth that could say that. You know, The hardest decisions we make are all the things not to work on. Uh, frankly, uh, because there's lots of things we'd like to work on that we have interest in, but we know that we can't do everything great. Is TV one of those? 
Well, TV is one that we continue to have great interest in. <laughs> uh, so I choose my words carefully there. But, uh, you know, TV is one of those things that, if we're really honest, it's stuck back in the 70s. Uh, think about how much your life has changed and all the things around you that, that has changed. And yet TV, when you go in your living room to watch the TV or wherever it might be, it almost feels like you're rewinding the clock and you've entered a time capsule and you're going backwards. The interface is terrible. Yes. I mean, it's awful. And you watch things when they come on unless you remember to record so them. So why don't you fix that? Well, yeah, you know, I don't want to get into what we're doing in the future, but um, it, we've, we've taken stabs with Apple TV, and Apple TV now has over 20 million users, and so it's, it has uh, far exceeded the hobby label that, we've, mm. that we placed on it. And we've added more and more con to it, uh, our content to it this year. And so there's increasingly more things that you can do on there. Uh, but th this is an area that we continue to look at. All right. That was our video for today. If you felt you had a little trouble understanding it, you could go back to the beginning of the video and watch it one more time. Otherwise, let's watch the video again with subtitles this time. And I'll explain common conversational phrases and expressions that you may not be familiar with. All right, let's listen again. Why did you think you had to buy a headphone manufacturer? In Beats, what we saw is several things. We saw talent, a ta talent that uh, I'm super impressed with. Uh, Jimmy and Dre off the, are off the charts, creative geniuses. Off the charts off the charts. When you say that something is off the charts, you mean that it is unusually great. You can imagine a chart that has rankings on it, and the higher you go up on the chart, the higher ranked or better something is. So if something is so great that it doesn't fit on the chart anymore, it is literally off the charts. One example of how to use this phrase in a professional setting could be when you're talking about an amazing presentation you heard. You might tell a colleague that the presentation was off the charts. All right, off the charts. Let's continue. Uh, they also had teams underneath them that I've really liked. Uh, Jimmy has a deep knowledge of the musical industry Dre knows artists. Dre is an artist. And they had started a, a subscription service. Mm -hmm. And this subscription service, you know, some people think they're all alike. Well, l let me tell you, I, I, was, I went into the thing skeptically. It, it, like into the should. acquisition? Yeah. Not to the acquisition, into their service, because right. Jimmy had told me how great it was. And so one night I'm sitting playing with theirs versus some others, and all of a sudden... All of a sudden... All of a sudden. The phrase all of a sudden means suddenly. The main difference is grammatical because the phrase all of a sudden is used before the subject of a sentence or a clause. So, for example, it sounds unnatural to say, I was working at my desk and I all of a sudden got really hungry. In that case, it sounds more natural to say, I suddenly got hungry. But you could say, we were in the middle of a conference call, and all of a sudden, the fire alarm went off. In this case, the phrase, all of a sudden, comes before the subject of the second clause. All right? All of a sudden. Let's continue. It dawns on It dawns on me. It dawns on me. When something dawns on you, it suddenly becomes apparent to you, or you realize it. Dawn, as you may know, is the time when the sun comes up. And the sun sometimes symbolizes knowledge or awareness. So you can imagine knowledge rising in your mind as you become aware of something, as something dawns on you. Imagine that you're at work, and you're spending a long time looking for some information on the internet. 
then it dawns on you that the information you need might be in the company archives. In other words, you suddenly realize that you might be able to get the information more easily. All right, it dawns on me. Let's continue. Me that when I listen to theirs for a while, I feel completely different. And the reason is that they recognized that human curation was important. Curation. Curation. Curation is not a word you hear every day, but you do hear it more frequently these days, especially in the tech field. Traditionally, a curator is someone who chooses the art for an art exhibit at a museum or gallery. The curator's job is to decide what art to show and how the art should be displayed. That's curation. In this video, Tim Cook is talking about Beats' music subscription service. And what makes the service different is the fact that the playlists are curated. So, in other words, someone chooses the songs to play and the order to play them in. And this is what makes the Beats service different from others. All right, curation. Let's continue in the subscription service, that the sequencing of songs that you listen to affect how you feel. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe, but you know it when you feel it. Mm -hmm. and, and so that night, I couldn't sleep that night. And so I was thinking, We've, we need to do this. They also have, I think, they've done a fabulous job with their brand and in the, the headphone business. It's a fast-growing business. They went into it not too long ago and, you know, have done really well. However, they needed a global footprint. We have a global footprint. They, they have been primarily U.S., not solely U.S., but primarily U.S. And so I felt we could get a subscription service. We could get incredible talent and that I think we can all put our heads together. Put our heads together. Put our heads together. When you put your heads together, you discuss or plan something together. For example, imagine a team of people working on a project together, and they're putting their heads together to solve a particular problem. In other words, they're putting their minds or their ideas together to solve that particular problem. All right, put our heads together. Let's continue. And do some things that are beyond what either of us are currently doing, and we get a fast-growing business. Where is Steve in all this? Well, he's, he's in my heart, and uh, he is deep in Apple's DNA. In someone's DNA. In someone's DNA. When something is in your DNA, it is a fundamental, unchangeable part of who you are. DNA normally means your genetic code, but in this phrase, it doesn't mean genetics. It just means something fundamental and unchangeable about a person or an organization. So somebody might say, it's not in my DNA to waste money. They don't mean that they have a gene that prevents them from wasting money. They just mean that not wasting money is such a fundamental part of them that they can't change it. All right? In someone's DNA. Let's continue. Uh, his, his spirit will always be the foundation of the company. Uh, I th literally think about him every day. Uh, his office is still left as it was. On the fourth floor? On the fourth floor. Uh, his name is still on the door. And we still, if you think about the things that Steve stood for at a macro level, he stood for innovation. He stood for the simple, not the complex. Stand for something. Stand for something. When you stand for something, it is so important to you that you insist on it. So when Tim Cook says that Steve Jobs stood for simplicity, he means that simplicity was something Jobs valued so highly that he insisted on simplicity in the design of Apple's products. You can also stand for things like human rights. 
or gender equality. There's also another common use of the phrase stand for something. It can also mean that something represents or symbolizes something else. So for Americans, the American flag stands for freedom, meaning that the flag is a symbol of freedom for Americans. All right, stand for something. Let's continue. He knew that Apple should only enter areas where we can control the, the, the primary technology. Uh, all of these things are still deep in our company. There's still things that we very much believe. The, the, the strive for perfection. Strive for something. Strive for something. When you strive for something, you try hard to reach a certain ideal. So you might strive to be the best. You might strive to be a good husband or father, or friend. You might strive to be successful in business. Striving basically means to make a strong effort to accomplish something difficult. All right, strive for something. Let's continue. For being the best, for only doing the best products, for staying focused. The fact that despite this table being so small that you and I are sitting at, you could put every Apple product on it, every single one that we ship today, and yet this year our revenues will be, uh, you know, approximately 180 billion. There's probably no other company on the face of the earth that could say that. On the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. The phrase on the face of the earth means in the whole world. So, no one on the face of the earth, as Tim Cook uses the phrase here, means no one in the whole world. The difference between the two is that on the face of the earth gives a little more emphasis. So, when you say on the face of the earth, it's kind of like saying no one anywhere in the entire world. All right, on the face of the earth. Let's continue. You know, the hardest decisions we make are all the things not to work on, uh, frankly. Uh, because there's lots of things we'd like to work on that we have interest in, but we know that we can't do everything great. Is TV one of those? Well, TV is one that we continue to have great interest in. Uh, so I choose my words carefully there, but, uh, you know, TV is one of those things that if we're really honest, it's stuck back in the 70s. Uh, think about how much your life has changed and all the things around you that, that has changed. And yet TV, when you go in your living room to watch the TV or wherever it might be, it almost feels like you're rewinding the clock. Rewind the clock. Rewind the clock. When you rewind the clock, you go back in time. This isn't a very common expression, but you might hear it sometimes. Tim Cook uses the phrase here in a positive expression, but you can also use it in a negative expression. For example, maybe a project your team worked on wasn't very successful. You might say, well, we're not going to be able to rewind the clock, but we can try to improve things moving forward. All right, rewind the clock. Let's continue. And you've entered a time capsule and you're going backwards. The interface is terrible. Yes. I mean, it's awful. And you watch things when they come on unless you remember to record so them. So why don't you fix that? Well, yeah, you know, I don't want to get into what we're doing in the future. Get into something. Get into something. The phrase get into something has different meanings. In this case, it means to begin to discuss something. So when Tim Cook says, I don't want to get into what we're doing in the future, he means that he doesn't want to start talking about what Apple is doing in the future. All right, get into something. There's also another meaning. Another common meaning of get into something is to start enjoying something. So you might be at a party, and at first you didn't think it was very fun, but after a while you start to get into it. 
meaning that you start to enjoy it. All right, get into something. Let's continue. But um, it, we've, we've taken stabs with Apple TV. Take stabs at, take stabs at. When you take stabs at something, you try to do something that you haven't done before. The more common expression is to take a stab at something. But you can also say take stabs at something. The phrase comes from trying to stab something with a knife to try and kill it. We frequently use the phrase when we're not quite sure that we're going to be successful at doing something. So you might say, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'll take a stab at it. All right? Take a stab at something. Let's continue. And Apple TV now has over 20 million users, and so it's, it has uh, far exceeded the hobby label that we, mm. that we placed on it. And we've added more and more con to it, uh, our content to it this year. And so there's increasingly more things that you can do on there. Uh, but th this is an area that we continue to look at. So those were some common conversational phrases and expressions fluent English speakers use in conversation. And you can use them yourself to sound more fluent and more natural. Before we finish our lesson for today, let's review and practice pronouncing each phrase and expression we just heard. I'll say each one three times, listen carefully, and try to say it just like I say it. Off the charts. Off the charts. Off the charts. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. It dawns on me. It dawns on me. It dawns on me. Curation. 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 Put our heads together. Put our heads together. Put our heads together. In someone's DNA. In someone's DNA. In someone's DNA. Stand for something. Stand for something. Stand for something. Strive for something. Strive for something. Strive for something. On the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. Rewind the clock. Rewind the clock. Rewind the clock. Get into something. Get into something. Get into something. Take stabs at. Take stabs at. Take stabs at. Now that you know what these conversational phrases and expressions mean and how to pronounce them, I want you to think about how you would use each phrase or expression in a real situation in your own life. Take each phrase or expression and think about a real life situation you might use it in. Don't just think of a random sentence. Think of a real situation you might actually be in. Then imagine yourself very clearly using the phrase or expression in that situation. This exercise will help you remember each phrase and expression more easily. And it will also help you use these phrases and expressions fluently and naturally in the future. If you'd like, you can also download the worksheet for today's lesson. 
The worksheet contains questions for each phrase or expression, and it will help you think of a relevant situation you could use that phrase and expression in. You can also use the worksheet with a fluent English speaker to practice using the phrases and expressions you learned in the context of a real conversation. And that's the end of today's Leaders Teach Conversation video lesson. If you'd like to practice your English listening comprehension a little more, I recommend listening to the video for today's lesson one more time from the beginning without subtitles. This will give you a chance to focus specifically on the sound of the language used in the video. This will improve not only your listening comprehension, but also your spoken English fluency. All right, thank you for watching today's Leaders Teach Conversation video lesson. I'll talk to you next time.